All right, everybody, welcome back into Cherry Picking. Today's video, we head to the third round of the NHL playoffs, the Eastern Conference Finals between the Carolina Hurricanes and the Florida Panthers. I've got Gav here joined today to break down. I'm sure you obviously wanted to see a different team in this scenario. Yeah, it's yeah, it pains me to not see the Leafs here, but um, it's exciting to see some different teams in the mm -hmm. Final Four, I think. Um, I'm definitely not going to be rooting for the Panthers, just <laughs> getting that out there. Yeah, that's, that's um, pretty fair. But now uh, I think we'll get into it deeper, but I think the Canes might be my team. I might have to do like a yeah. little emergency press conference and <laughs> declare my fandom. Just for the rest of the playoffs. Yeah. I think that's totally fair as well. <laughs> Um, yeah, the Canes are now down. Canes in Vegas. Um, we're recording this before the Stars and Kraken finish out their second round series. But the Canes in Vegas are the top two favorites now. They're both around plus 200, depending on the sports books you're looking at. All the odds that we'll be talking about, either from BetMGM or DraftKings, both of those links to sign up will be in the description. Both two really good welcome offers. What was your overall thought of that F Panthers and, and Leafs series? Like, what was your your original thoughts, and then just like your evaluation by the end of it of them winning in five. Yeah, I think like even though it ended in five games, it probably was one of the closest series mm -hmm. of the second round. Um, pretty much all the games except for game one, I think, was decided by one goal. So it was really close. And like really, to me, it just came down from the Leafs making too many mistakes, whether you want to say Florida was making them do that in the first place, and then Bobrovsky. And I think that's going to be a huge part in this series that we're about to talk about. He's leading all goalies right now in the playoffs with 10, oh, yeah. like, I think it's 10 goals saved Not above expected. expected. So that's absurd. Like, I see a lot of, like, commentary online right now, like how they saying that contract that he has is almost justifying this playoff performance right now. Like, <laughs> yeah, he single-handedly won them that round against the Leafs, in my opinion. Yes, the Leafs need to find a way to score more than two goals per game, but it's kind of hard when you have a guy like that. Like, the Leafs were getting good chances, um, so I think like it's going to be huge. I'm, I'm not happy with the result of the series, but it happens, and um, we'll yeah. see what happens but, going forward. Bobrovsky definitely played well. He was their, their anchor, absolutely. I still think Florida played well enough like outside of their goalie mm -hmm. to justify, maybe not winning in five games, but to win that series. I, like, yeah. I don't think you guys outplay them in every single game or every as, uh, aspect of uh, on the ice. Like, mm -hmm. I think Florida is just a, more, a little bit more physical team. I think they have a better forecheck. Um, yeah. which, which tends to you know work in the playoffs. But looking at this series now, you have the Canes at like minus 135, 140, depending on where you're looking uh, to win this series. And then Florida at like plus 110. Uh, the Hurricanes to win in seven, plus 425. Panthers to win in seven, plus 550. And then you have the series spreads as well. Let's go to the goaltending first. Like you did talk about Bobrovsky. Um, I think Florida, it's easy to say they have the edge at this point in the goaltending department. Like, no discredit to Freddie Anderson and Ranta. Like, they've both been solid. But Freddie Anderson, you know, had one, I guess, one bad game against New Jersey. They also won that series in five games. Mm -hmm. um, but do you think Bobrovsky can keep it up against this Canes team? Because they're a very, you know, puck possession-driven possession, possession -driven team. Um, and, you know, they shoot a lot. Do you do, can He's 34 years old. He's played pretty much the best hockey we've seen him play as a Florida Panther in that Leaf series, do you think that can translate over to this series? Yeah, I think it can. Um, I think one of the biggest differences is going to be Carolina's defense, and I. But like that's the thing. Like I don't know if Grubowski, um can keep doing it. Um, but the, what we've seen from him, like, or historically too in the playoffs, like when goalies get kind of hot, like I feel like they carry their team yeah, all the way just feed the, feed like i feel like it, it just keeps going like he's gave me no reason really to believe that he can't do it yeah the one game i guess you could say game four he didn't play like out of this world you know the least but i mean some of the goals yeah. like that first goal that the least scored in game four went off like Nylander went off the ref and, skate yeah, ref right in front of the net right? so so definitely a little unlucky there but when luck's not really played into a factor of it like he stood on his head game five i think he had like 50 plus saves yeah um as they went into overtime so looking at some of his numbers against Carolina, so they haven't seen Bobrovsky at all this year. Carolina's 2-1 and one against Florida in the regular season. The only win Florida had against Carolina was a 40-save shutout from Spencer Knight, who's not on, even on the team right now. Alex Lyon is the backup, mm -hmm. um, and Alex Lyon saw them in one of their last games of the season, I believe it was. Um, it was Freddie Anderson versus Alex Lyon, and the Canes won 6-4. So that gave them the 2-1 series, or sorry, season edge. Um, and then looking at Bob's career against Carolina, he's actually 13 and 13 and one, I think, over the course of his career. So 27 games against yep. uh, against Carolina. 
um, but he's lost his last two starts, which would have been last year as well. So I don't know if it really necessarily benefits either side that Carolina hasn't seen Bob this year or that uh, Florida like hasn't shown all their cards, I guess, with, with Bob here. So that'll be interesting to see. I think it'll be a pretty good duel between him and Freddie. And then looking at kind of um, Florida's offense and their their – their way of attacking. Do you think that'll work against like this really solid defensive, defensively structured team and this the way Rob Brindamore kind of asks his players to play? No, I don't think the Panthers are going to have the success they had against the Leafs. It's mainly just this back end to me. Like I think this is probably the strongest back end remaining in the playoffs. And then how the Canes played too. The Leafs were kind of a coursey team, but not nearly to the extent as mm. the Hurricanes. You saw that against the Devils, like they dominated pretty much every game. They had one bad one where they lost 8-4, I mm -hmm. think it was. Um, so I don't think they can keep that attack up. They both have similar four checks. They both have big bodies. I'd say the Panthers are maybe a bit more skilled, but... Yeah, maybe, maybe like the, especially some just of the top little bit, guys. like some of the top guys, but like really all in all throughout the depth of the lineup, like I think I'd give the Hurricanes the edge. And then there's news of Tara Vinen probably coming back mm -hmm. too. So I think that's another huge piece. Um, yeah, I, I don't think the Panthers can keep it up. Yeah, I, I kind of look at it as well. You look at five on five play, Carolina's been the better team throughout the playoffs. And sure, they've played um, maybe easier opponents. But, it, you know, it's also a little bit of wear and tear. Like, playing Boston and Toronto, those are two grueling series, even though it was just in five games. It's a lot of energy to give out. It's also kind of why I'm thinking Bobrovsky might not just be able to just keep doing this throughout because it's it's 30-plus it's 30 shots or saves every single night I think he's pretty much had to endure since b becoming the starter mm -hmm. back in the playoffs. And Florida's 10th right now out of – or 10th out of the 16 playoff teams that were – um, that were started in the playoffs right now. Their expected goals for is like two and a half in yeah. five on five, and Carolina's is close to like three. And then the Corsi four percentage, as Gav mentioned, Carolina is definitely winning in that category. So I'm leaning Carolina. I bet on Carolina to win the cup right before the, the playoffs started at 12 to one. So I don't know if necessarily picking Carolina to win this is the most is the best decision, but we've kind of saw some success with. Um, maybe it didn't work in us, for us in the Florida-Toronto series, but for Seattle and Dallas, we're yeah. like, you know, let's just bet these games to go to six or seven yeah. because two to one odds is better than taking um, is better than taking Florida or Carolina to win at minus one forty because I yeah. I think general consensus I think this game goes out the series goes to less at least six right yeah I think you, you see that you see that in these series prices that we're talking about when will the series finish. Like it's heavily fa like it's still plus two ten, but compared to anything else, like the books anticipate this to be a long series, and it's a short like it's minus one thirty, like not a huge favorite with home ice. So the books are telling us that they anticipate the series to be very close because, like the home ice advantage is usually like twenty cents on the money line, right? So, like in Florida, like I could see it being like close to even money, like for this matchup. Yeah, I uh, I could see that as well. I. I, I I don't know. Let's check actually what the uh, the game line is for game one, just to kind of gauge it. Yeah, Carolina's minus one thirty at home tomorrow. Like that's mm -hmm. that's that's a low price for them. I thought they'd be a little bit it's, higher, but well, I they, think the Leafs were minus one seventy, almost minus yeah, two hundred in game games five. At home. Yeah, game five. There, I think they're bet up to almost there. So yeah. definitely pay attention to some of the prices because that is definitely a strong indication. I think we're both in agreement that. Betting the six games, seven games at two to one, I believe it was on DraftKings or MGM, is the safer way to go. Gun to my head, I would take Carolina to win in six. I don't even think taking Carolina to win in six and seven, you sprinkle a little bit on both, is a terrible idea. Like plus, you get I think it's around five to one on both. I think those are those are solid because I could definitely see like if Carolina wins both these games at home. Uh, I think they win in six, no problem. Yeah. I think they can take or five. It, it, you know, I think they could definitely take one in Florida and then even come home and win that game five or even game six, whether it, depending on how far they go. Um, is there a guy on Carolina that you think kind of needs to like maybe step up? Like we've seen in that other series against the Devils, Jordan Martinuk had like. Four straight games with two plus points. <laughs> yeah. Do you think we'll see a little bit of a switch to like that first line again with like Aho? I know Nature started to play a little bit better at the end of that series as well. Um, could you um, see that kind of flipping, or do you are you kind of looking at the D men to keep? I'm looking at offense the. Through? I think they're just going to keep rolling like how they are right now because we've talked about it before in like the regular season. Like they don't really have the star power, and like that's how they're going to be successful. It's similar to Seattle where everyone's just going to be rolling. Yes, there's the guys like Seth Jarvis and Martin Natchez 
on the first power play units, but Marnuk went absolutely nuclear, and he's not on the first power yeah. play. Yeah, so true. it's hard to say. Like I think one of these top guys are going to step up. Um, Florida's penalty kill was actually really good against the Leafs, mainly because of Bob too. Yeah. Um, but their penalty kill was terrible against the Bruins. Like the main reason they beat the Bruins was because. Um, all mark and they didn't get yeah. swimming until game seven like that goaltending was not good there um but a big name to step up like a jarvis has been playing pretty yeah. well jarvis i like jarvis been really solid back yeah. on that first line too with or on that first line with aho yeah and nason it'll we'll, we'll see kind of where their lineup goes if tara vinen ends up coming back this series or if it's um in the stanley cup final if they make it that far but one thing rob brindamore has said throughout the entire playoffs like the reason we're winning these games every single buddy on our every single player on this team is doing their job consistently night in and night out yes for fast too. yeah exactly yes really for fast like all the way down their lineup they're being they're super deep and especially on defense as well jalen chatfield's played great through the playoffs brett pesci these are guys on their second and third deep pair so i think Carolina is a little bit more battle tested, I th- like throughout the regular season and just how this team has been formed over the couple of years. And Florida, this is a great story, obviously, but I just can't see them getting past, past this Carolina team. And for whatever reason, Carolina can continue to be uh, like seen as an underdog or just not really as big of a favorite, obviously because yeah. they're injuries. But I think that team it doesn't necessarily. Um, yeah, they they, they really that. got no, like some people like us were sharp and respected <laughs> yeah. the Canes last series, but. Like, it was Underdogs. crazy to see all the people that were all over the devil yeah. saying there's no way that Carolina can handle all this devil star power. And I think this matchup is just better than the one they just had than yeah. against New Jersey. Like, really, it comes down to Bobrovsky and what kind of Freddie Anderson we're going to get because he has been pretty solid. I think he has, like, four goals saved above expected right now. Like, pretty decent, like, the one bad game. But yeah. it's, bad this game. is going to be a battle. This is going to be a battle. This is I'm really excited. Like, two fast teams – Possess the puck a lot with just really, really solid, talented uh, defensemen. So I'm really excited for this series. We're going to be rolling with in six games or seven games. Either team at two to one, I think, is probably your best bet at this point. Um, I'm going to be just riding my Carolina ticket uh, to hopefully uh, get to the Stanley Cup Finals. Maybe I'll throw like 50 bucks on Panthers to win this series. Just so just a little Carolina, hedge. you know, just a little bit of a hedge. Do you but, think not the same video, but do you think um, whoever wins the series is going to win the cup? Uh, I, at this point, yeah, because I, I still don't believe in Vegas. Like, if Vegas meets up with Carolina, I think Carolina could take care of business just because of their goaltending. I don't believe in Aiden Hill and if Bruce Waugh comes back even. Yeah. And then Dallas, though, I think will be a tougher. Whoever, if Dallas makes it, that'll be the toughest test for either of these East teams. Yeah, agreed. So we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, I think Carolina's the consensus between the two of us. I think we think they're going to be going to the Stanley Cup final. Bet the six games or seven games at two to one. The links to sign up at DraftKings and BetMGM will be in the description below. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.